It turns out that Grayscale hit a record in fundraising, but it wasn't followed by the Bitcoin price surge. Now we must move on to the second phase, which is surging up to $2,000. How can the information about XRP sales by Jed McCaleb affect the price of this cryptocurrency? Welcome back to the coin post. Bitcoin can't return to rising. Ethereum is the first of the top altcoins to hit a new all-time high, and Ripple co-founder Jed McCaleb keeps selling XRP. What do these events mean, and how could they affect the future of the cryptocurrency market? First of all, for going to the moon and the altcoin season expected by many. Let's sort it out right now. Thanks to all for watching our videos and helping to promote our channel with your likes. And let's start. In our previous cryptocurrency review, we mentioned an alarming warning from JP Morgan, saying Bitcoin could go into correction if the flow of funds to the Grayscale fund decreased. From the latest news, we find that it didn't actually happen, like at all. Moreover, on January 18th, a new record was set when the fund bought 16,244 Bitcoin in just one day. It's worth about $600 million. And I mean, JP Morgan said the problem could start if investment flows drop below the 100 million a day threshold. It turns out that Grayscale hit a record in fundraising, but it wasn't followed by the Bitcoin price surge. Instead, we see the correction. While making the video, the price is just below the support level at $35,500. Also, the 21-day MA should serve as support, but for now its price is going down. Nevertheless, this level seems strong enough, but as stated in the previous video, the longer Bitcoin is below 40,000, the greater the risk of a bigger correction. The price range continues to shrink, and the odds of dropping back to 30,000 are pretty high. But that's just one possibility. Bitcoin never stops to surprise and perhaps tomorrow the price could surge again. For example, following the news that the future US Treasury Secretary Jeanette Yellen has promised as much monetary stimulus as it will take to restart the US economy. The proponents of the theory that Bitcoin cannot fall as long as the dollar printing machine keeps working are now stronger than ever. But the gap on the weekly CME futures chart at 24,000 is still there and the rise from 19,000 to 42,000, or 120% in just 4 weeks, really deserves a good correction within 30-40%. to 40%. And it's not a bad thing. On the contrary, it confirms a long-term upward trend. But as I mentioned earlier, and I'm gonna say it again, surprises like an unexpected surge above 40,000 are indeed possible. Therefore, traders should get ready for any price moves. That's pretty much all on Bitcoin today, though of course we're gonna mention it further. And next, let's talk about Ethereum and XRP, so stay tuned. Ethereum has officially exceeded the high of January 2018. We cannot see this picture in most exchanges, and it also hit a new high on coin market cap. But then the correction started, and until we know where it's going, let's find a way out together. The good news is, while well, Ethereum is confirming a previous prediction we had in my previous video, if you missed it, click the link in the description box. So, phase 1 is breaking through the all-time high that happened on the afternoon of January 19th. Now we must move on to the second phase, which is surging up to $2,000, in anticipation of launching futures on Chicago CME. Trading begins on February the 8th, and we have enough time to boost the price up if other factors do not intervene. As you can see, after hitting a new high, the Ethereum price is corrected and it's happening following the Bitcoin price drop. The good news is that if altcoins continue to follow Bitcoin, therefore we're still in the global cycle of the crypto market growth, actually repeating 2017. While data showing a decline in the market share of Bitcoin from 72% in early January to 65% today may suggest a shift in the cycle to a phase where altcoins begin to overtake Bitcoin at the growth rate. I mean, altcoins could hit it off any time, as long as there is enough fuel in the form of money 
but the Fed's helping with that now. The bad news is the potential Bitcoin correction we talked about at the beginning of the video. Let me know in the comments if you think Bitcoin could drop below 30,000. We value every opinion, and I even might include the best predictions in the next video. As you understand, a big correction of Bitcoin can put pay to the Ethereum rise, and we would get back to the question of a new all-time high only after the Bitcoin price breaks through $40,000 again. So this is all about Ethereum, and next let's talk about the sale of over 28 million tokens of XRP. Ripple co-founder Jadma Caleb, who then left the company and created the Stellar Fork, continues to relentlessly dispose of the tokens owed to him. After the sex sued Ripple, he paused XRP sales, which was linked to possible problems with withdrawing XRP from the company's wallets because they gave him tokens by parts. But now he is back on the market, and 28.6 million XRP was sold. The order was placed on January 8th at the rate of 28 cents, for which the seller got 8 million dollars. I mean, that's a good deal, considering you just have to sell the tokens. He didn't invest in them. He just gets constant transactions from Ripple as the XRP creator. Everybody's used to the fact that he makes such constant sales, but I'm wondering why it's always in dollars. Why not buy Bitcoin? Does he not believe in cryptocurrencies at all? Or is it unacceptable according to the contract with Ripple? So how can the information about XRP sales by Jed McCaleb affect the price of this cryptocurrency? I wouldn't start the panic and sell just because he does. He's been systematically selling XRP for years as part of the Ripple exit agreement. On the contrary, it's positive in the way that Ripple currently has full control over its assets in the cryptocurrency. And since they were dumping another batch of tokens for Jed, they are therefore confident that an upcoming trial against the SEC will not be able to accuse them of trading in unregistered securities. About the outcome of this court I shared in my recent episode. There you can find my expectations for the XRP price, so check it out if you missed it. I know I've mentioned a lot of recent videos today, but that's okay, because I gotta keep my hand on the pulse. So subscribe to our channel. I'm sure the number of subscribers on the channel will soon overtake the price of Bitcoin. And regarding XRP, the key date is still February 15th, when the second Ripple must prepare their case files. These documents could really affect the price, but keep in mind the option that even before the date, parties may come to an agreement. For example, Ripple could just pay the fine, and that's it. It's still unclear whether the regulator will accept such a decision, especially after the appointment of Gary Gensler as the new SEC chairman who had previously stated that XRP were just unregistered securities. But on the other hand, what else would they do, as the project was launched so long ago? Paying the fine seems like the only reasonable option, and that shouldn't be a problem for Ripple at all. So this was the latest news for today, and I'm counting on your support with your likes and shares. It helps promote the channel and makes the cryptocurrency community grow. That's it for today, thanks for watching. It's the CoinPost channel. Subscribe and get enlightened.